Hey everyone, Sam Charwood here alongside Andrew Van Leeuwen from Speed Cafe AVL. Welcome. Thanks for having us. That's oh, awesome. Uh, your first thing. Now My you, first thing. You yep. camped down the track last night, about 80 k's in. What was it like? Tell us about the experience. It was unreal. I can't say I'm surprised by anything here because <laughs> I was, I had very high expectations coming here. I've wanted to come and cover this event for absolutely years. It's been on the bucket list. So um, it's met those expectations. None of us like, wow, I can't believe the spectacle. I knew it was going to be spectacular. But to actually see it with your own eyes, to be out there, as you mentioned, camped out around the 45K mark on the track. So it's about sort of 60K of driving to get out there. Awesome experience. You know, you feel like you're right in the thick of it. I think the thick of it's actually a bit further into the stage where yeah. some of the real wild parties are. But it was just cool to be out there. It felt like the proper Fink experience and... Just having a blast. What a cool place to be and a cool event to see. It has been an incredible first day here at the Tats Fink event for 2024. We know that the, the bikes have finished now, so cars and bikes have wrapped up. Let's start with Bo Robertson. He, he was the, the winner today in the yeah. cars. Minute and a half clear of his next best competitor. He was just rampaging, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like We were out on the stage, saw him come through. He was clearly pressing on pretty hard. I probably expected, having watched the intervals and that sort of stuff, that he would he would end up with a bit bigger lead. He had a couple of the buggies behind him at the very start, but obviously Billy Geddes in that Toby Price trophy truck yep. made up a lot of ground. As the uh, as the stage wore on, there's about 90 or a bit under 90 seconds between them, so definitely all to play for tomorrow. We know that that truck that Billy's in can do some damage because Toby was such a weapon in the thing, so um, yeah, going to be an interesting day, but you know, for tomorrow, but for Bo, you know, he said in his in his comments at the end of the day, you know, we've got the lead. He's actually got to get past us yeah. if he wants to win the thing, and that's what's going to be important. And when you're reading that sort of stuff, you're like, great, this is going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be a really tightly fought tussle on the 224-kilometre journey back to the start line here. Interesting for Billy, because we don't actually know who's going to be driving that truck tomorrow. Brett Kaminsky said that he might jump into it, and he was actually one of the casualties today. So we, we saw a lot of uh, casualties. We saw Brent Smoothie and David Walsh finish in third. But beyond that, Travis Robertson, Matt Hanson, Brett Kaminsky, Ryan Taylor, Aaron and Carl Habe, all those huge names are out of contention. Yeah. So it's really, it's, it's anyone's race. That's Fink, right? Yeah. But like, there's nothing guaranteed you can be there with, even if you had a more, even if Bo had a more comfortable lead or anyone did, you just never know what's going to happen there. And again, we were a very small portion in, but you saw some pretty second-hand looking ca trucks and buggies and cars coming through today. So, you know, it's just, it's so incredibly gruelling out there. So nothing's guaranteed until they end up back here. Well, one of the other biggest surprises was the production class. Of course, yep. this battle that everyone's talking about between Chevrolet and Ford. Ford seemed as though they were visibly faster, even though they were a little bit slower in the prologue. They were quicker today, but they finished three or four minutes behind Craig Lowndes in the Chevrolet. The Ford guys said last night they were kind of expecting to be there. About eight seconds. Like they expected that just because of the nature of the prologue and how it's a bit smoother in here and sort of longer corners and that sort of stuff. But when they got out on the trail, that bit lighter range of Raptor was going to be better. At the stage we were at, there was barely 10 seconds between them and there'd been about 15 cars between them when they actually right. started the day. So clearly that was the quicker car. Apparently Brad Lovell and the Ford got past Craig Lowndes and the Chevy at about the 55-kilometre mark. Yep. Then the Ford started having some issues. They had overheating with the dampers. They had some drive mode problems that they had to stop for. They had um, some braking issues, an ABS light issue, that sort of stuff, which sort of hampered their day. That allowed Lounsey to get to Fink first out of the two production cars that are left in that class. I think it's three or four minutes between them. The Ford guys seem pretty happy with that, given everything they've encountered, because now they can make some repairs and, and have a crack tomorrow. And I think, I think that that range is going to be capable enough of being fast enough. The question is, is it reliable enough? And also, the, the other wild card is, Craig Lands had never done this event. Yeah, yeah it's until, incredible. You know, prologue yesterday, the shakedown he's been doing before that, and then his first proper crack at it today. So he's a pretty good guy driving cars, that bloke, and he would have learned some stuff on that run. He said that he uh, uh, underdrove. You yeah. know, he was more conservative than he probably needed to be just because he is learning. So... Perhaps he's got to pick up the pace a bit tomorrow as well, just armed with a bit more knowledge from today. Yeah, you can definitely never underestimate him. And same with Brad Lovell. Like, he is probably the best first driver to be behind the wheel of that Raptor. He comes all the way from Colorado Springs. He's been here before. He won the production class last year as well. So I think he's really well qualified for that. Now let's talk bikes. David Walsh. Can anyone stop him from taking a fifth consecutive Fink race? It really doesn't seem so. No. And it was so obvious out on the stage today just how hard he rides that thing. He was... Uh, third quickest on the prologue yesterday. His cousin Liam Walsh led the way, and some people were kind of surprised about that. But again, he said today, 
it was nice to be able to sit behind some guys and sort of see what was going on. It was all sort of part of the plan, and he and he stretched his legs once he got out there, and 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 has you know a pretty pretty comfortable lead. Some bad luck for Liam Walsh; he came off the bike, I think it seems at some point. Yep. Um, but yeah, David Walsh, like I think that's he's got four on the bounce, and the fifth looks looks. You know, we talked about you can't you can't write anything off at Fink, but. If you were looking for a safe bet, that's about as safe as it's going yeah, to get I at think this so. stage, I reckon. I think so. And it's worth noting that he is doing the double this weekend as well. He's not driving a truck, but he is the navigator for Brent Smoothie, who, who currently in third in the car. So a big weekend for him, but he's done this before. He knows yeah. what it's all about. It's, it's huge. I mean, I guess that there's an advantage to it, perhaps, that he gets to go and have a look at the track and what the condition it is at the time that he runs through in the, in the, in the truck in the morning. But... What your body must go through, even in the even in the navigator's seat, and then to do it again on a bike, like the physical challenge of doing that twice in two days is is enormous. So it's remarkable that he not only does it, but is competing at the very front of both classes. Like incredible athleticism. Yeah, it's it's very hard to fathom. That is race day one wrapped here at Fink for 2024. Keep an eye out on all the AORC socials for more action tomorrow.